Welcome to the Practical Mystic Show, where we bring you simple tips and techniques from around the globe to help practical people deal with extraordinary experiences. And now, your favorite scientist, shaman, and sacred clown, and also the show's host, Janine Bolin. Hey, and welcome to the Practical Mystic Show, brought to you by yours truly, Janine Bolin and the Eight Gates. This is a show where we integrate the world of mysticism into everyday life, and we use tips and we tricks, life hacks from the ancient masters as well as modern millennials. If you think you've gone crazy, if you see things and you hear things and you feel things that those around you don't, this is your show. We have today a guest. Her name is Patty Peretz, and she is a natural-born medium who specializes not only in grief counseling, but also transitional life changes, such as when people's spiritual gifts kind of come online and they're a little concerned and nervous about what's going on. She is the lady that can help you out with those sorts of gifts. But before we get started with Patty, we just need to have a word from our sponsor since they helped us with the show today. Learn how to live your future now through purposeful change with the eight gates. This world guarantees changes will happen in your life, and the eight gates guides you through these changes safely. It's done with clarity and direction through customized programs involving face-to-face meetings, online classes, book tutorials, meditation techniques, spiritual awakening, and a vast referral network of shamans, psychics, healers, and spiritualists to fit your individual needs. This process of transformation is available to you today. Book a free 30-minute phone consultation at the8gates.com. Welcome back to the Practical Mystic Show, where today's guest, Patty Parrott, will be sharing with us some tips on handling grief through the new year, as well as give tips to individuals on how they can reach out to their own loved ones that have recently crossed over on the spiritual plane. Something you need to know about Patty, not only is she a personal friend of mine, but she also has done quite a bit of work for me and my clients. She has a natural connection with spirit that started at a very young age. She was seeing and talking to the dead by the age of five. And what was really cool was she grew up in a house full of spiritually aware people who had participated in things such as seances, hypnotism, table tipping, even the occasional Ouija board. And it was because of this diverse background of hers that I first had to just hear her story. Patty's other unique gifts allow her to connect with spirit primarily through Claire audience. So what she hears she's supposed to say to people, that's the information she repeats. She has many such gifts, though. Some of them are like the treasured modalities of clairvoyance, claircognizance, clairsentience, and psychometry. And being a strong empath, Patty delivers honest and compassionate readings, spiritual guidance, and grief counseling. Her passion is connecting clients with their loved ones on the other side and to help others recognize the spiritual awareness in their own lives. So Patty's goal and mission in life is very similar to my own, which is to reach masses connecting with physical people with their spiritual counterparts on the other side. The spirit that comes through has messages intended for the client to receive, answers to their questions, and guidance for those in need of comfort and healing in times of distress. So I am so thrilled that we get to have Patty on the show. So welcome, Patty. Hi, Janine. Thanks for having me. Hey, no problem. With somebody with as many years of your experience, I just I just get really excited. Aw, thanks. <laughs> so as we get rolling, kind of tell us a little bit about some of your gifts because everybody has a little bit of a different definition. So for most folks, they understand that clear audience means that you hear what you're supposed to say. But describe for me a little bit more about your gifts and how they manifest with the clairvoyance. You have a ability to see things like visions. The visions pertain to something in your life, something that is going to happen, something that you need to be aware of, whether it's warnings or danger or just a spirit letting you know that they're present. The visions come through your third eye, your mind's eye, and they're just very clear. Mostly they're very short. They get straight to the point, and then you're able to take action or know what you're supposed to do after receiving that vision. It's always for a reason. So for you, your clairvoyance happens very quickly, almost like a a flash of light or an image that's just projected onto your mind? Yes. 
Okay, cool. And then, and then for, for me, you, what is Claire by Cognizant? The Claire audience as well. I'm sorry, say again. For me, it's followed by the Claire audience as well. So if I see a vision, then I'll hear exactly what I'm supposed to do afterwards. Fabulous. Okay, well, tell me about your Claire Cognizance then. That's an, an instinctive knowing where you know things are going to happen before they do. A general example is knowing who was on the telephone before the phone rings, before caller ID, of course. Uh, <laughs> knowing stuff about people without anyone telling you, even strangers. You start picking up on, you know, knowing what they're about, what they're doing, knowing when there's danger ahead again. When I would get hits on knowing when there's danger ahead or some kind of warning, I would literally freeze dead in my tracks and it wouldn't be able to move because I know I'd have to make you know, a left turn instead of a right turn or not make that step forward. So that was always present for me before I even knew exactly what it was. Excellent. I know with some of the experiences that you have talked to me about, how sometimes when you would get those first impressions or those flashes of insight, I remember how you were saying that you stumbled a lot as a kid just because you were like, (laughs) whoa, I have to turn, I have to quickly turn as opposed to moving in a direction that you you had wanted to go. So help me out with clairsentience then. Let's see, the the clairsentience, you're feeling emotions in people emotions and feelings for people, whether they're standing in front of you, sitting next to you, over the phone, or even on the TV. It's very powerful. That was the hardest modality to harness for me because the empathy became overwhelming and I didn't understand why I was so overwhelmed. Why am I watching this person cry on TV and all of a sudden I'm crying and I don't even know what they're crying about. Uh, picking up on people's feelings, emotions in public, in the, in the grocery store, on the sidewalk, anywhere. So that, that was really hard to harness, but learning to lead with compassion was extremely important for me. For, for then I was able to c- control how I was absorbing other people's feelings and emotions that were affecting me. I was definitely more helpful and productive if I'm able to operate in a compassionate manner instead of crying with the person and trying to (laughs) finish a reading or something. It's like smiling and crying at the same time. I'm smiling, but I know (laughs) you're crying. So separating that was key to my clarity with that. Fabulous. And I can also okay. see it in my daughter as well when she's picking up on other people's emotions. So I'm able to uh, pick up on that with her and help her with that or take her out of a situation or know, let her know that it's okay and help her get through it. Lucky girl. Not everybody has a mom like that. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Although people are becoming more and more aware of empaths, but a lot of the other gifts are, are still being discovered by certain groups of, of people. So with the psychometry, tell me a little bit about that. Oh, that was interesting. I would pick up an item that someone who had passed had owned before. And this would just be sitting at a friend's house and say, oh, here's my grandpa's watch or my dad's watch or whatever kind of item. A lot of watches, people hang on to those for some reason, probably because they wore them all the time. And there's a lot of energy that's absorbed into that material item. So I'd hold it and I'd be able to start talking about the person, what kind of person they were, you know, some of their intentions, some of their experiences while they were wearing the watch. It was very interesting. And... I would just, it it would almost fall into um, a reading session while holding, you know, the watch or whatever. And it just, you know, I would just hear through Claire Audience everything the person needed to know about that watch owner. It was fabulous. And it connected the person with their loved one on the other side as well, knowing that they could still hold on to this watch. Everyone wants a little piece of someone materialistically to hold on to. Uh, You don't necessarily need that, but, you know, it does help a lot of people and comfort them as well. And then again, in in life, there was a label attached to psychometry. (laughs) 
So that right. Was, was, and there have been a lot of movies where they would use folks who had psychometric abilities to find murderers and stuff like that. You saw that in a lot yeah. of the 1970s and 1980s detective shows and that sort of thing. Yeah. So it's uncommon, though. It's not, you don't necessarily, uh, not everyone has that gift, so I was very excited to have you on the show today for that. Also because of the connection that you can build for a person who has lost a loved one, you can bring a lot more meaning to an item for them based on what you know. Yeah. And then they always take the item back and they're just like holding it and, you know, letting their energy absorb into it and they're just loving it ten times more than they ever did. Right. It has so much more meaning because you've given them an experience. When it comes to the grief counseling that you do, uh, I was just kind of curious. You've done so much of it, been very, very busy over the last several decades with this. What are some tips that you could give people when it comes to them wanting to reach out to a medium to talk to them about their loved one that has crossed over? Do you have any like basic tips on when you're looking for a medium, here are some things to have ready or a situation to have available for you? Yes. It's always good to write your questions down ahead of time. That way, once you are in the reading and you're getting all this information, that can be overwhelming. And at the end, if you don't have your questions written down, you forget you wanted to ask these things. But I would say 90-some percent of the time, those questions are answered before the end of the reading. You never even get to your questions. But putting that thought out there is a thing. So when you have these questions, you know, the spirit on the other side, they know you want to ask these questions. So that's how that information is transferred, channeled through me to them without literally asking the question directly. Another tip is not to be afraid. I've had quite a few people say, oh, I want a reading, but I'm so afraid of what I'm going to hear. Well, you're not going to hear terrible, horrible things. You know, the other side is a good, wonderful place of peace and love. You know, you're not going to get hell on earth in return. It doesn't work that way. It's the client would receive the information they're intended to receive. The spirit wants to help them. They want them to know that they're, they're loved and they haven't gone far. They're just on the other side and they will see them later at some point. But uh, eliminating the fear is huge. Also, if you're scheduling with a medium or any kind of mystic, you either see their picture online or you have their business card or a referral verbally from someone. If you have that gut instinct like, no, you know, like a, a dead drop in your stomach that, no, this isn't the person for me, move on to the next one. You'll get like a psychic hit. Everybody has these abilities. They're just developed at different levels for each and every person. But it, when you know you're going to see a specific person, you'll feel really good about it and you'll get real excited and you'll get real anxious and you can't wait for the time and the the date for the call to be scheduled and for everything to happen because you're so anxious and willing to receive the information that's coming through. Also to be open and just take it all in. Break the walls down, leave those behind. (laughs) Just go in barefoot and fancy free. (laughs) <laughs> You're able so when to you say some and folks allow a lot more in that way. Yeah. Well, when you say be open and go in barefoot and fancy free and and let the walls drop, are there some tips that you can give people if this is their first time going in to see a medium that they can, you know, cuz you and I were discussing earlier about how some people have had loved ones that have been deceased for 20 years before they could get up the courage to actually come to somebody. So when you say be open and and drop the walls, can you give a few tips on on how to do that? Putting the thought into the spirit that you want to connect with, the one you're missing the most, the one that's on your mind the most, that'll help that spirit come through. You can't guarantee which spirit is going to come through. It's not like calling them up and saying, hello, mom, can you come back over? I need to talk to you. But putting those thoughts out there, the spirits can hear your thoughts. Your thoughts are things, and that's how to make that happen. And, and just drop the fear. That's what gets in the way. 
that'll create the wall for you not being able to allow and receive the information coming through. So it'll make it easier for the spirit as well. If you're okay. If you're Do you allow people to record your sessions? Open your heart. It's all about love. And the more love you put into that spirit that you're looking for to come through, the easier it is for the spirit and the receiver to connect. Do you allow people to record your sessions, Patty? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, the old days, uh, that to that happens <laughs> to be one of the best tricks I've I've ever heard from people is that record your sessions because you're so in the moment, you're so in the experience that a lot of times you maybe open the information but you won't hear it all because of the experience of, of finally yeah. being able to connect and then yeah. So I just wanted to know if if you allowed that. Absolutely, well, and I've done a lot of email readings as well. Some people are more comfortable with that. And then they'll get to read that email or that Word doc, however it's formatted, over and over and over. And then they they get a lot more out of that. Um, That very helpful. I had some folks prefer email just so they could hold on to the paper and just put paper to pen and write, write notes on there and then be able to ask more questions on the next round. Okay. Email readings are something that are very uh, intimate and private and personal. And that's yes. something that I've noticed a lot of mediums have been very grateful when email first came out so that they could do that for their for their clients that were quite a distance away. So yes. good. Thank you very much for reminding me about that. Especially if there's other people in the house and, you know, the receiver doesn't want others to know in the house that they're doing this because it's personal. Agreed. Thank you. Kind of switching gears just a little bit, let's focus on the people who want to connect with those on the other side. You start off connecting with a a medium, but at some point the medium is going to encourage you to start your own spiritual journey. Or, you know, you guys are fabulous at getting people started and walking them through the system of, of how to connect with spirit, that sort of thing. But at some point, I've talked to several folks that, They would like the client then to start finding their own path or their own journey. So I know you've done a lot of teaching in this area, and I'd love to hear a few tips that you can give to folks who maybe have had one or two readings with medium and would like a medium to kind of coach them on their own spiritual journey. What are some recommendations you could make? During some readings, uh, the spirit likes to get the receiver's attention through various ways, whether it's through uh, butterflies or birds knocking at the window or pecking at their heads, or they might smell the spirit of their loved one in their house, or they might be tapping on the window, they might do make some specific noise in the house. Somehow they'll get your attention, and once the receiver starts to connect with that, then they're opening up their spiritual awareness. They're bringing spiritual awareness to them, knowing, hey, that's my mom. I smell her. Plain as day. I I can do this. And that's like the tipping point where everything starts to open for them and they're able to make more connections. And then they'll seek maybe another reading and then I can refer them to people like you, Janine, who is very helpful. (laughs) And we have uh, a lot of classes and other networks and other tools that they can use to for their spiritual development. Your uh, meditation tool was highly effective for me. I meditate regularly on a daily basis. And then after I took your meditation course, that changed everything. I thought I was where I needed to be, but you never are. There's always more. So when things get stuck and you start things start to become difficult, you know, you just stop, take a a step back, try not to get in your own way, and just breathe and meditate. And I found your classes were very helpful for that, because you don't have to keep fighting the wall and, you know, not being able to move forward, because that will impact the spiritual awareness that you're trying to open up to. Well, thank you so much for referring uh, folks to the meditation class. I'll pay you the five bucks after the show. (laughs) I wasn't expecting that plug, but thank you. 
Those are all excellent tips to go ahead and seek a reading with a medium with the intention of opening up, the intention of creating a paradigm that you can move forward with and then go out and seek tools for spiritual development from a variety of teachers. I highly recommend that people seek out different teachers until they find one that really resonates with them with the understanding that eventually they'll learn all they need to from that teacher and then they move to the next next teacher. And that is what I have seen as as being the most wholesome and holistic way of, of opening up. Do you have any other tips that you would like to give our listeners before we close out the show? The spiritual guidance received in a reading will also help direct in where you need to go for the spiritual development and tools as well. And I agree. Just never be Thank afraid you. to reach out. Yeah. It's never dangerous. Everyone always benefits. A good reading always has tears in it. Let the tears flow. They're supposed to come out because you're making that connection. And it's a wonderful thing. A lot of people don't expect the information that they receive. And, um, and when they do, it's, it's quite enlightening. And then they want to tell others and tell everyone about their, their reading and they can't stop talking. So it's, it's just very exciting at, at times for a lot of folks. <laughs> and the thing I like hearing from folks is the fact that they're like, see, I wasn't crazy. You know, that's Absolutely. the thing I always enjoy hearing from Absolutely. people. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I did that half my life until <laughs> I stopped talking about it. and then <laughs> you know. Exactly. If people want to get a hold of you for your own reading, how do they? How do they get a hold of you? I have a website. It is psychicreadingsbypatty.com. I can be contacted through there. Okay. And, and Patty is spelled P A T T Y. Yes, with a Y. Yeah. Yeah, with a Y. Patty with a Y. You have some uh, books and classes yourself coming up in the next couple of years, don't you? Oh, absolutely. There's a lot yeah. to put out there. And um, I'd like to say the floodgates are open. <laughs> yes, they are. So could you give us your website address one more time, please? Yes. Psychic Readings by Patty with a Y dot com. And I Wonderful. Have contact and information, they can... email, and phone number on there. And. Uh, to schedule readings and such. Wonderful. Well, Patty, thank you so much for your time today. I really do appreciate it. And for those of you out there in TV land and radio land listening in, tune in next for the next show, which will be with Jill La Liberté. She's an acupuncturist and esoteric astrologist and Reiki master, or Reiki master. It depends on which area of the country you're in. Uh, she currently works from Denver, Colorado, and she will be discussing the forecast for 2018 and bringing in the Chinese New Year, which this year is the Earth Dog, which occurs on February 17th. However, our show doesn't air until February the 23rd. So until then, everybody, have a great day. Stay grounded while you're here on planet Earth while you reach for those stars. We'll see you again soon. Take care. This has been The Practical Mystic Show with Janine Bolin. For show notes, resources, and more, visit the 8gates.com. Thanks for listening.